gentlemen, jump on in the broadcast. This is our last prayer stream of the week. We have been all week long, every single day, having prayer streams. This is our eighth stream this week. So we've been really, really busy. It's been an amazing week. I'm excited that many of you are writing me saying, I actually want to pray now. I actually want to read my Bible now. I actually want to seek the Lord. And so my goal doing this was getting you guys excited about prayer, getting you guys excited about worship, getting you guys wanting to get in the presence of God. You will not survive 2024 without a prayer life. You will not survive Christianity without a prayer life. And many Christians are dying on the vine. They're on life support because they don't pray and they have no relationship with God. So the number one thing I want you guys to get is not a relationship with me, is a relationship with God. This is very, very important. This is vital to your spiritual life. If you don't have this, you're going to struggle as a Christian. And I don't want to see you live your whole life struggling. I don't want to see you live your whole life in compromise. I don't want to see you live your whole life lukewarm. I want to see God's best for your life, God's purpose established in your life. So that is why we're doing this. And I'm hoping that it just won't be seven days. This was basically just training wheels. Now I'm pushing you. Training wheels are off. I'm pushing you to go walk this out. We had a theme every night. We've done mass deliverance. We had the secret place. We had a worship night. We had a miracle and healing. We had a family prayer night. And the seventh day I said, Lord, what should I do? Because every day I was really asking God what we should do. We pretty much covered everything. But I felt like God wanted me to do a praying the scriptures night. So many of you have no clue what is praying the script scriptures. You've never prayed scripture. And this is something that's very powerful because you don't have to say, God, what should I pray for? If you pray his word, it's literally his word. It doesn't come back void. So we're going to pray the scripture. I have, I don't even know if I should tell you how many scriptures I have because the chances of us getting through them all are slim. I'm going to try to go fast, even though I don't even know, you know, you know me, once I start praying, going over one verse, I do like 10 minutes per verse, but I have 60 verses down. So I have a lot. Maybe if we go one minute per verse, we can make it. But it, uh, likely I'll just end up praying and praying and praying and getting lost in the glory and then just getting through like 10. But we're going to try to get through 60. So we're going to pray scripture. I also want to give you a recap on last year. Thank you to everyone that's partnered and supported us. We had 202 million views total. We streamed for 262 hours last year. We got 391,000 new followers. We had 10.1 million hours watched on YouTube. We posted 718 videos last year on YouTube and we had 2.4 million live comments. These statistics blow my mind. I didn't do this. This is all God, all glory to him. I just want to thank you for those of you that have partnered so financially. We are crowdfunded. We can't do this without you guys. And so thank you for your support. We've given our lives to this. This is all we do. And we really appreciate you guys enabling us to do this full time. Next year, one of the changes will be, well, next year, this year, one of the changes are we're not doing monthly partner calls. We're doing weekly prayer meetings with our partners. So we're going to be sending out a link next week, a static link, and all year, Thursday afternoon, we will be praying with the monthly partner. So if you want to be a part of that, you can partner monthly on our website, or you can become a YouTube member, and you'll be getting the link. And I'll be posting about it nonstop. So if you are a partner and you're like, I didn't get the email, I'll make sure that you get it. I'll send it to you personally if I have to on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, any of that. Okay, really quick last announcement, and then we're going to start is... I'm praying about whether I'm going to do my stream tomorrow. I was supposed to do tomorrow and then a podcast Tuesday. I'm not doing the podcast Tuesday because we already did one Friday night and doing them three days apart is too close. So I'm still debating whether I'm going to do tomorrow night teaching or I'm just going to take the week off and record videos and upload videos next week because I have some a bunch of videos I want to do and I haven't uploaded a video in over two weeks because I've been going live every day. So I don't know if I'll be live tomorrow. Just check the page. I'll try to I'll think about it. We'll see. I'm going to pray about it tonight and make my decision. And if I'm live tomorrow night, it's going to be awesome teaching. And if I'm not, I'm taking the week off to record, spend time with my family. And I have a bunch of other stuff that I'm just delayed on doing because this week I've been trying to figure out these prayer streams every day. We've had guests down. It's been a very, very busy weekend and busy week and a way to start the year. So thank you for everyone following and partnering and doing all the good stuff. Okay, let's pray the scriptures. I'm going to give you guys the verses. You can write them down. Please don't tell me to slow down because you can rewatch the video or put it on slow. Again, we might be live tomorrow night. We might not. It's day seven of seven. Thank you to everyone that's been here the entire time. It's been powerful. It's been amazing. And let's just open in prayer. Father, I just pray tonight, God, that we would finish strong. I pray, Lord, that you would just touch every person in this broadcast by your spirit. We just pray, Holy Ghost, do whatever you want to do. I pray, God, that you would illuminate your word. I pray as I speak your word, 
God, your promises and your word would come to pass. God, do a supernatural work in us. Father, we don't want to be just a natural, normal teaching stream, just getting up here talking about whatever. God, we want to be a supernatural stream where your presence is allowed to move, where your power is allowed to move. So God, we say tonight, come on, Chad, I want everyone praying. We say tonight in our life, God, do whatever you want to do. I want you to type that in the chat right now. God, do whatever you want to do. Do it in my life, God, if you want to heal me, if you want to deliver me, if you want to set my family free, I just pray, God, you do whatever you want to do. So let's start praying scriptures. We're going to pray these back to God. I'll say a little prayer after each one, and it's going to be powerful, and you guys can write them down. You can write them in the chat, however you want to do it. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. So we say the verse, and then we pray the verse. Father, I pray that we would not be conformed to the patterns of this world. God, I pray that we would be a set-apart people. I pray, God, we would be a holy people. I pray, God, that we would know your perfect will, that we would test and approve, God, whatever's happening in our life, your will, your plan, it's pleasing, it's perfect. God, help us to not be conformed to the world. Come on, ask the Lord to break worldliness off of you. God, we're tired of being worldly. We're tired of being compromised. Break the worldliness off of us, God. We don't want to be conformed to the world's pattern, but Father, we pray tonight we'd be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I just pray for every one of you that God would remo renew your mind, God would cleanse you, and God would wash you. Okay, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. So this verse is saying God is working out all things. How many things? All things for good for those who love Him. So if you don't love him, you're not eligible for this promise in this, in this verse. God, I pray those in the chat right now, God, that are struggling, that don't understand what they're going through, you would show them that you're working all things out for their good, Lord. That you have a way, God, of taking the bad things in our life and making them good. God, you have a way of taking what the enemy meant for bad and using it for your divine purpose. Father, we pray that you would begin to work things out. Right now, God, I pray, work things out in our family. Work things out in our marriage. Work things out at work, God. Work things out at school. Whatever area of our life that we just don't understand what we're going through. Some of you are going through trials. But 2024, God, we're praying that you would just work together all things according to your purpose. God, we love you. God, we honor you. God, we appreciate you. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, mm, sounds like what we're doing tonight, and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is admirable, lovely, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Okay, so we're going to pray this. Father, help us not to be anxious about anything. According to your word, God, you say, don't be anxious about anything. But I pray, God, instead, what do we do instead? We come to you in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving and we let our requests be known to God in every situation so there's no situation we should be anxious in every situation prayer petition thanksgiving and request to God and what happens the Bible says the peace of God which transcends our understanding will guard our hearts and mind father I pray right now your peace would be released over this broadcast I pray God the peace of the Lord for 2024 in my life in my marriage in my children, in my ministry, we just pray. Come on, chat, pray. Come in agreement with this, that the peace of God that transcends understanding would be released right now. We thank you, Jesus, for that. We, we put our mind on things that are not carnal, not fleshly, but spiritual things of above. Right now, we put our minds on. In Jesus' name, God, we put our minds on things above. Let us not think about the carnal things. Let us not think about the things of this world, but things above. Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my righteous hand. Father, I pray that we would break out of fear. God, let us realize that you're going to strengthen us, you're going to uphold us, and you're going to help us. God's word says he will strengthen you, he will help you, and he will uphold you with his righteous hand. That's Isaiah 41.10. So we just pray right now, the help of God to come. You know, some of the most powerful prayers I pray are just, Lord, help, help. That's one of the best words in prayer. God, help. We need you. We need your power. We need your anointing. Whatever you're going through right now, I want you just to pray, Lord, help me. Strengthen me. Uphold me in Jesus' name. Matthew 6, Seek first. 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So this is a very important thing we need to pray at Matthew 6, is seek first the kingdom of God. God, I pray that you would help us to seek you this year first. God, we're tired of putting you on the back burner. We're tired of seeking you second, third, fourth, fifth. God is saying, reprioritize, make him number one, stop making him an option, and you wanting him to make you a priority. God does not want to be an option. God wants to be a priority. Lord, help us. And everyone, I want you to share the broadcast and like the broadcast right now. Let's get this out there to as many people as we speak these scriptures. Help us, Lord, to seek you first. God, help me. Some of you might need to put that in the chat. God, help me to seek you first. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. And this one's going to preach to me right here. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Guys, these verses are fire. These are some fire verses. It says, do not be afraid, Joshua 1, 9. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. There's nowhere you go where God is not with you. God has your back. So Father, I'm praying that we would not be afraid and that we would not be discouraged. Break the power of discouragement. Break the power of fear off of us right now in Jesus' name. God, we pray right now. Fear would be broken. We pray anxiety would be broken. We pray, God, that we would go forth with you in Jesus' name. God, let the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, just go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Touch our lives right now. Touch our lives, God. Let us not be afraid in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way. My wife's texting me that the chat's on screen. Uh, all you have to do is get the remote, press the middle button, and you'll see a chat button. You can turn it off, Alyssa. My wife's watching at home, and she doesn't know why there's a double chat, but we're helping her tonight. But we're just praying to break fear and discouragement. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that you may be in peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, for I've overcome the world. That's John 16, 33. God, we thank you that even in our trouble, that we're going to take heart this year because you've overcome the world. God, we know that there's trouble, there's trials, there's tribulations, but Lord, we thank you that you've overcome the world, that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray right now we would be overcomers in Christ. Come on, you are an overcomer. God, Jesus says, there will be troubles. I, I hate to be the one to say this, 2024, there will be troubles, but take heart for I've overcome the world. God, I pray you'd help us to take heart. Some of you are getting set free just from hearing these scriptures. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and, be and not be faint. So God is going to renew your strength tonight. You are going to soar. It's time to get out of the chicken coop. Some of you hanging out in the chicken coop trying to soar like an eagle. Eagles don't hang out with chickens. Let's get out of the chicken coop and let's soar with wings. Let's soar on wings like eagles with the power of the Holy Spirit. So those of you that are, that are weak, I pray God would renew your strength tonight in Jesus' name. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. One translation says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, we pray, remove the fear. No fear here in Jesus' name. No fear in my life. God, remove the fear, and I just pray, God, that we would be disciplined and have love and have your power. Come on, it's time to live a disciplined life. This is not the year to live all year again, not praying. You already didn't pray last year. You already didn't walk in power and love last year. This is the year you break out of fear, you break out of timidity, and you walk in the power of God. So we just pray, God, that this verse would come to pass in our life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. God, help us to walk out this new creation life. We are new creations in Jesus' name. God, I pray right now that new creations would rise up, that the old would pass away and the new would be here. The new us, God. We don't want to be the, the person we were before. The old man is dead and the new man is, is risen up. Just pray God would awaken that new man, that new creature. No more being the old Jew. The old Jew's gone. That's what the Bible says. That's good news. The old Jew is gone. You don't want to meet the old Isaiah. But praise the Lord, that man's been buried and a new man is here. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to bring life and have life to the fullest. So Father, we pray that every strategy and plan of the enemy is broken, that he will not kill, that he will not destroy, that he will not come against our family. But instead of there being death and the devil stealing from us and destroying us, God says, I'm going to bring life, and you're going to have life more abundantly. You're going to have life 
to the fullest. So we just pray tonight, God, the enemy's de de defeated. There's no power of our life. Come on, chat. This is a prayer meeting. We're praying scriptures, but we'd have life and life to the fullest. Proverbs chapter three, verse five, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, submit to him and he'll make your path straight. Father, we pray tonight that we would no longer, this is helping me tonight. Lord, we pray that we would no longer lean on our own understanding, but God help me to no longer lean on my understanding, but in all my ways, acknowledge you. In all my ways, especially this year, God, I wanna to submit to you like never before. I want, to, I want a straight path. I don't wanna live my life unsubmitted. I don't wanna lean on what I think, but God, I pray right now, I would submit to you and that you would make my path straight, God. Straighten my path. Lord, anoint my path and just help me not to lean on my own understanding. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there is no law. Now, I just named all those. Some of us don't have any of those. Some of us have one or two of those. We want those in our life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to cultivate the fruit. These are not gifts. Gifts are given, fruit is cultivated. We don't just get these freely. We have to cultivate these in our life. That's Galatians 5.22. God, I pray love. I pray joy. I pray peace. I pray patience, I pray kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control over every person watching. Lord, help us to steward and cultivate the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Help us, God. We're so busy at wanting gifts because they're free. We don't want to spend time to cultivate. You got to cultivate. An apple tree doesn't just appear. It takes cultivation. It takes time. It takes fertilizer. It takes water. It takes, you know, there's, there's work to be done. Lord, I pray you would cultivate these things. No more being angry, no more being bitter, no more being chaotic, no more being angry, no more being faithless, no more being harsh. We need gentleness. We need patience. We need joy. 1 Peter 5, 7. You're going to like this one. Cast your anxiety on God. Cast your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Lord, help us to cast our anxiety onto you. Who needs that? Type one if that's you. One, hold on, let me type one in the chat. God, help me to cast my anxiety on you. God literally tells you, man, God says you can throw your anxiety on me. You can literally go, I have all this anxiety. Where do I put it? Don't stuff it in a closet somewhere like I do when I clean my house and just stuff everything in a closet. Don't do that. Get your anxiety and cast it on God. God says you can throw it on me. I'll take it. I want you to remember that this year casting your anxiety on God. Father, help us to cast our anxiety on you. God literally told you to do this. We're not like doing something he doesn't want us to do. What amazing God we serve that we can cast our anxiety on him. Lord, help us to cast our anxiety and just give you our cares. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. So we need to humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Four things, humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Father, I pray, God, help us, Lord, to humble ourselves. Lord, break the pride in our heart. Help us to be humble, help us to pray, help us to seek your face, and God, help us to turn from our wicked ways. In Jesus' name, Lord, do what only you can do. Psalms 91 11, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. Lord, I pray that you would just send your angels to my house. I pray, God, you'd send your angels to protect me. I pray, God, you'd send your angels to protect my kids. Come on, pray that God would command his angels to come help you. Pray that God, Hebrews 1 says, these are ministering angels. These are God's, God's spirits that minister to people. So Lord, I pray you'd command your angels to guard my family, guard my life, guard my wife, guard my kids, guard my friends, whoever. We ask you, God, send your angels. Send that, that divine help. I've had angels literally save my life over and over and over again. Actually, actually saved my life. At 12 years old, I accidentally hung myself and an angel pulled me off the rope. Thank you, God, for sending your angels. I pray you'd send those angels, God. John 14, 27. I'm doing good. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm doing good here. I'm almost at 20 verses. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you peace as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's John 14, 27. God, we ask for peace. We ask for peace. God is giving someone 
peace, not that the world gives. The world gives temporary peace. God gives eternal peace. So Lord, we pray right now for the peace of God to come. Don't let your heart be troubled. Help our heart, Lord, when it's troubled. Bring peace in the storm. Bring rest and bring understanding, God, in Jesus' name. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, he says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. God's asking us tonight to come to him. So Lord, tonight we come to you. We are weary. We are burdened. We need rest. And God, tonight we come honestly to you. We don't repeat our prayer over and over like the Gentiles thinking God answers because we keep repeating the same thing. We come to him. We conversate with him. We're talking to God tonight, guys. It's conversational. It's not transactional. We're not here to put money in a slot machine and see if God, you know, just answers. We land on whatever color we're looking to get land on. This is not roulette. This is prayer. We're coming to God. Father, we're coming to you tonight and we're giving you our weariness and our burdens. Just let him lift it off of you right now. Talk to God like you talk to a friend. We don't need to be religious about it. We don't need to say, Lord, 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 a million times over and over again. We're coming as a conversation. Lord, we ask you to take our burdens. I give you my burden, God. The burden of all these platforms and pages and I have to do this and this. I have a lot of burdens for the ministry. And God, tonight, I just give you those. I give you those. I, I give you my burdens and my weariness. And God's going to give you peace and give you rest. Some of you need rest. You have trouble sleeping. The Lord's going to give you rest. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus, help us to go make disciples. Come on, pray that right now. Jesus, help me to make disciples. Father, I'm praying that you would help me to stop being so lazy, and Lord, help me to stop making excuses and start making disciples. Lord, I want to walk this thing out. I actually want to make disciples. I actually want to fulfill the Great Commission. This is the co-mission with Christ. The Holy Spirit's our co-worker. He's our co-laborer. So let's do the Great Commission. Lord, send us. There's 2,000 of you watching right now. God wants to send us to do his work. God wants to send us into the nations of the world and fulfill the Great Commission. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is common to man. And God is faithful and will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, God will provide a way out so you can endure it. So th when the temptation comes, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God's going to show you the exit. Father, we pray that every time we're tempted, Lord, you would make the exit clear. I pray, God, this year we would not give in to temptation. We would not give in to compromise. I pray right now, God, that you would just release breakthrough, that we would see the exit and we would not give in to temptation, God, but we'd be able to endure it. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You guys can type in the chat when I say it. A lot of people are typing it in the chat, but you guys can type it when I say it. No more giving in to temptation. If you give in to temptation, it's your fault because God said, I've already given you the exit. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. God, I pray that we would fall in love with your word. Lord, I pray that this year your word would teach us. God, I pray your word would rebuke us. I'm already feeling rebuked tonight. Just praying these scriptures. I don't know if you feel it. I feel it already. I'm, I'm feeling rebuked by the word of God. It's beautiful. But I pray, Lord, that it would rebuke me. It would correct me and it would train me. That's the four things that Paul writes to Timothy. The Bible does. It teaches, it rebukes, it corrects, and it trains. So, Lord, I pray your word would come alive. I pray we'd have an obsession with your word. And I pray that we would dive into the word of God. Turn off the TikTok. It's turning your brain into mush. And turn on the word of God. Put on the word of God. Put on that audio Bible. Get in your word. And let the word of God transform you. Don't be conformed. Be transformed. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. Here's what I know about God. Especially when you start praying. God does way more than you're even asking him in prayer. You might say, Lord, I just want you to save my kid and just have him go to church with me on Sunday. And God says, I'm going to go way above. I'm going to anoint him. I'm going to use your child as a preacher, as a minister. I'm going to give him ministry. God, everything we pray, God multiplies it by a thousand and does exceedingly abundantly above what we ask or imagine. God, help us to pray big prayers. Lord, I pray that you would exceed our expectations according to your power that's working in us. Come on, the Holy Spirit is working in you tonight. 
Let's all share this video right now. Hit share on YouTube and Facebook. The Holy Spirit is working in you right now. The power of the Holy Spirit. God is going to do. I'm not making this up, y'all. Oh, here he is giving a false prophecy. It literally says, God is going to do measurably more than we can ask or imagine. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. So Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so no one can boast. We are God's workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Lord, we just want to stop right now, God, and thank you for your grace. Thank you, God, for saving us through faith. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell them this right now. Thank you, Lord, that salvation is a free gift. Who's grateful? Am I the only one grateful that salvation is a free gift? I didn't have to earn it. I could never earn it. My righteousness is filthy rags. But God, it's a free gift by grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have prepared good works for us beforehand, that we should walk in them. Thank you, Lord, that I'm going to start walking in your works, that I'm not going to say, well, works don't matter. But instead, I'm going to read your word and say, I'm going to walk in the works. Works don't gain a salvation, but works are what happens after we've received salvation. We start working for God. Thank you, Jesus, for your free gift of salvation. No one can boast God. I can't boast, Lord. Nobody in the chat can boast God. It's the free gift of grace. And we thank you tonight, Jesus. We honor you tonight, Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to him, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is when Paul was saying, take this thorn. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul said, I prayed three times for the Lord to take this and he didn't take it. But instead, God says, my grace is sufficient. My power is perfect in weakness. If you're feeling weak, let the power of God perfect you. I felt weak all week. Literally, no pun intended. I felt weak all week long. I pinched a nerve in my lower back Thursday night right before Paul and Morgan flew in to film me all day Friday. And I couldn't even move. I've never had this before where my lower back just, I never had a pinched nerve in my lower back before. I couldn't even move. And me and Paul and Morgan were talking. I said, maybe the Lord's just keeping me weak. Maybe God's allowing this to show me how weak I am, to keep me humble. But I just felt weak. But I'll tell you what, in my weakness, God was made strong. In my weakness, I said, Lord, I'm weak, but you are strong. Let that weakness turn into strength. God will rest upon that. God's power rests upon weakness. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. What is God's will for me in Christ? Give thanks in all circumstances. God, I ask you to help me. This is what you, you, I'm helping you pray, guys. I'm leading you in prayer, but you have to pray as well. So this is what I would pray on this verse. God, I pray you would help me to give thanks in all circumstances. God, help me in the midst of troubling, not just good circumstances, all circumstances. God, help me in the midst of hard circumstances to give thanks, in the midst of trials to give thanks. I mean, you go through the hardest things. There will be hard days ahead in 2024 for me, for you. Unprecedented hard days coming. Who knows? We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds it. And so I'm choosing this year. And I know I'm saying this year a lot is because it's January, but we need to do this every year, all year, the rest of our life. We should just say, I choose for the rest of my life to give thanks to you. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to give thanks. Why? Because it's God's will for you. What is God's will for my life? That you'd give him thanks in all circumstances. So Lord, I just give you thanks. Whatever I'm going through right now, whatever trial, I don't understand it, but God, thank you. I give you thanks. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would wash us and cleanse us. We confess our sins to you. Whatever sin you have in your life, confess your sin to God right now. 1 John 1, 9 says he's faithful. He'll forgive you of your sins. He'll purify you from all unrighteousness. So Lord, right now I just pray, God, whatever sin in my life there is, I confess it to you. Search my heart, God, for any sin, and I just confess it to you now. Isaiah 53, 5, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus, thank you for what you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for being pierced for me. Thank you, Lord, for being crushed for my iniquities. Thank you, Lord, that by your wounds I am healed. Father, I thank you for sending your only son to die on a cross for me. Jesus, you are worthy of my praise. 
Jesus, you are worthy of giving my life to. Thank you, Jesus. I honor you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I'm grateful for what you did for me. 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Lord, I pray that I would be sober in mind. Some of us are drunk in our mind and God wants to sober us up. We're not alert, we're not aware. We don't even know there is an enemy. And we've fallen into the drunkenness that there's no devil, there's no spiritual realm, there's no warfare, but the Bible says, be alert. Be alert and sober. Who am I alert of? The devil who's looking to devour someone. So I pray that you would sober up. I don't know what else to say but that. I pray, God, that you would, everyone would sober up, Lord. I pray I would sober up and I would be alert and aware of what the enemy's trying to do because he's looking to devour, but he will not devour my family. He will not devour me in Jesus' name. I'm not going to be drunk anymore. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And we're obviously talking about spiritual drunkenness, not actual drunkenness. Don't drink. All right, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, in view of God's mercy, this is important right here. Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true and proper worship. Guys, if you want to know what is true and proper worship, offer your body to God as a living and holy sacrifice. So I want you right now to offer up your body to God. God, I give you my hands. Come on, pray that. God, I give you my feet. God, I give you my mouth. God, I give you my body. I literally offer my body to God on the altar of living sacrifice and say, Lord, it's yours. So don't go watch these crazy movies. Why don't you watch that movie? Because my eyes don't belong to me. My eyes belong to God. My mouth belongs to God. I can't afford to talk like that. My mouth belongs to him. My hands belong to him. I don't just go do whatever I want to do. This body doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. So tonight, we offer our bodies to God in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. And thank you, Mods, for posting each one of these verses that I'm saying. And I'll try to say the verse slower. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that exalts itself, above, exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. I want you just to lay your hands on your head right now. And I want you to say, I take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. No more arguments in my mind. No more uh, pretensions that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Lord, I take every thought captive and I pray my mind would not wander, would not go wild, would not go crazy, but I pray my mind would be set on good things, would be set on you, Christ. So Father, I thank you that my mind is set on you. We praise you, Lord. We're gonna have clean thoughts. Come on, chat. Are you guys, are you guys listening to it? We pray we'd have clean thoughts and you just wash us right now. Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So right now, I want you to be still and know that he's God. You don't understand what I'm going through. God says, be still in the midst of chaos, in the midst of panic, be still and know that I am God. This is something I need to do. If you guys didn't know, I have a hard time being still. I don't know if, that might be a shock to a lot of you guys. You're like, not Isaiah, you're not hyper, are you? I have a hard time just being still. When some problem happens in my life, I am a solver, I'm a problem solver. I wanna figure out instant way to solve it. I'll do whatever I have to do to solve it. And God says, Isaiah, be still and know that I am God. So let that be a word for you. It's a word for me. Everyone's like, yeah, that's a shocker. I didn't know you were hyper. Lord, help us to be still. Hey, but if I wasn't hyper, I wouldn't be giving you 60 verses in an hour. So it's a benefit sometimes. Hebrews 12, 1. That since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight, so there's weight, and sin, which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that has been set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to lay off the weight and sin. There's things in your life that are not sin. They are weight. They weigh you down. And the Bible says, don't just lay off sin. Lay off weight and sin. God, I pray you would help us to lay off the weight in our life that's holding us from running the race. God, show us the weight that is in our life that is holding us down from running the race that's been set out before us. What is the weight? What is the sin? that you need to lay aside so that we can run the race with endurance 
that you've set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Come on, lay off the weight. Share this, like this video. We're only halfway done. Let's keep going here. Day seven of seven of seven days of prayer. 777, that's a good number. Galatians 2, 20. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I have been crucified. Lord, help me to live a crucified life. God, help me to crucify myself every single day. You Guys, you got to make a choice to crucify yourself every day. God, help me this entire year to get up out of bed, crucify myself so that Christ can live in me. And the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But I pray, God, that we would walk the crucified life. God, that I would walk that narrow, crucified life, Christ in me, the hope of glory, walking in the Spirit, walking in holiness. Sometimes that crucified man wants to get up off the cross and you gotta, you gotta put him back on. Paul said, I die daily. So you gotta put him up, back up on the cross. Philippians 1, 6, being confident in this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it out into completion until the day of Jesus Christ. God is gonna finish the work he started in you. Some of you feel like you're always under construction. Join the club. But God says, I'm gonna finish the work in you. I'm gonna finish the work in you. Father, I pray you'd give me confidence to know you're not done with me yet. Come on, somebody needs to hear this word. Philippians 1, 6, God is not done with you yet. He's still working on you. You're under construction. You're not done. You've not arrived. You're not a failure. God's not giving up on you. God's not walking away from the job. He's not like some construction worker that abandons the project. God says, I'm going to carry out this work in you. Under construction, God's still working. I'm getting worked on. God's still working on me. I don't have it all together. I don't know it all. I'm under construction, but God is still working. And I thank God he doesn't give up on me. He still works. Romans 5, 8. God demonstrated his love for us in this and this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that even when we were sinners, you sent your only son to die for us. God, we honor that. We acknowledge that. We praise you, Lord, for sending Jesus even when we did not deserve it. God, we thank you that you didn't wait until we got our life together before sending Jesus. But God, we thank you that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. While we were sinners, God, we thank you that Christ died for us. We honor you, Lord. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. God, I pray you let our light shine. Lord, I pray that we would not hide our light, but Holy Spirit, help that light to shine. Holy Spirit, shine out of us in Jesus' name. Magnify yourself, Holy Spirit, in our life. God, let our good deeds be seen so that others can glorify our Father who's in heaven. Come on, pray that God's light would shine out of you. Who's tired of covering up their light? Who's tired of covering their light with a basket and their light not shining? Who's tired of nobody seeing our good deeds and glorifying God? People should look at our life and glorify God because of our good deeds. That's what the Bible says. Come on, am I, I guess I'm the only one. I guess I'm the only one that is tired of covering up his light all the time. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not get weary in doing good. I feel like, listen, I picked out 60 of these verses. I might just be, I might just be picking these verses out for me, y'all, because all of these verses are speaking to me tonight. Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, but in the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Lord, I pray we would not get weary in doing good. God, help me not to get tired doing good this year. Help me not to get weary doing prayer meetings every week. Help me not to get weary, God, doing live streams and putting videos out to glorify you and to glorify your kingdom. God, I pray you would break weariness off of us and we would just keep pressing forward and that we will reap a harvest. There is a harvest coming. There is a harvest coming in Jesus' name. Isaiah 26, three, you will keep, this is one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. I want all of you to write this verse down. Isaiah 26, three, if you deal with anxiety, if you deal with chaos in your mind, you need this verse. Isaiah 26, verse 3 says this. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is on you because they trust in you. Anytime I deal with any anxiousness or anxiety, I quote this verse in my head. I say, God, 
I put my mind on you and you'll give me perfect peace. If you want perfect peace, all you have to do is set your mind on Christ. Set your mind on Christ and he'll give you perfect peace. Father, I pray that you would help us to set our mind on you so that we would get perfect peace. Let our mind be set on you. Let our mind be set on heavenly things, God. Bring your peace. Remove that anxiety and bring your peace, God. In Jesus' name, let us have perfect peace. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Come on, ask for the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Father, we ask you for power. Lord, release the power of the Holy Ghost. Baptize us in the power of the Holy Spirit. Anoint people watching. Power of God. Gifts of God. Stir up right now, Lord. Power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray right now, let your power be released. Let your anointing be released. Let your fire be released. Perfect peace, God. Perfect peace, God, I pray in Jesus' name. Perfect power. Your power is perfect, Lord. Peace and power be released, I pray in Jesus' name. Come on, just let the Holy Spirit come upon you. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you right now. Holy Spirit, fill us. I need to be filled again, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Colossians 3.23. We're on verse 41 here. We're doing good. Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as you're working for the Lord, not for human masters. This verse is about working a regular job for human masters, human bosses, human leaders, but you're working as you're working for God. In other words, it's time to stop having a bad attitude. It's time to stop having a bad attitude at work. Work like you're working for God. Lord, I pray you would help us as we work. Work unto you, God. Whatever we're doing, I pray, Lord, we would work unto you, God, that we would stop having a bad attitude. God, that we would stop being bitter or angry. But Lord, that we would work hard as we're working unto you, not for human masters, but working for the Lord. Lord, I just pray right now, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. Come on. Somebody needs, needs to pray this. Lord, help me to work for you. Help me to work like I'm working for you. Hebrews 11:6. 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So you have to believe two things, that God exists and that he earnestly re he rewards those that earnestly seek him. Are we earnestly seeking God tonight? Sunday night, we're all in here. There's 2,200 people in here. We're all here praying. We're all here quoting. I have 60 verses I'm giving you. So what, is, what does the Bible say? We need to believe if we earnestly seek him, he'll reward us. So I am asking the, I'm asking the Lord, give us faith, God. Give us faith. Why? Because it's impossible to please God without it. Give us faith, Lord, that you exist and that you earnestly reward those who seek you. You earnestly reward those who earnestly seek you. I pray, God, that you would help us. Help us, God. Help us, Lord, to acknowledge your existence and that you reward those that seek you. Seek the Lord and he will, he will reward you. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for everything flows from the heart. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart. God, I pray that you would guard our hearts. God, put a guard over our heart. Let us not let corruption into our heart. Let us not let pollution into our heart. Let us not let compromise into our heart. Let us not let sin into our heart. Let us not let foul things into our heart. But God, help us in our heart to just be guarded because we know everything in life flows out of the heart. Guard our hearts, Lord. Guard our minds. Guard our eyes. Protect us, God. Protect us, God, from whatever it is the enemy wants to come and, and fill our hearts with, fill our minds with, fill our spirits with. God's going to protect and guard our hearts. Just pray that right now. Jesus, guard my heart. Lord, guard my heart, God. Wash my heart. Cleanse my heart. Renew my heart. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in my heart, in my life, in my mind, in my eyes, in my body. God is working things out right now. Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I urge you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe you've received it and it'll be yours. Whatever you ask in prayer, so you ask it in prayer and then you believe that you've received it and then the Bible says, it'll be yours. Man, we pray, I pray, and I'm just gonna admit this. There's prayers I pray that I don't even, I don't, I think I believe them, but then if they get answered, I would be shocked. So what does that mean? It means I'm, I don't believe them. I'm shocked. I gotta start praying 
and believing that God's already done it even before he does it. And then it'll be yours. So believe it before you receive it. That's what the Bible says. That's what Mark 11. You don't like that? Go talk to Mark 11, 24. Ask God about it. I pray, Lord, help us in our unbelief. Help us to believe your word. Help us to believe what we pray. And God, help us to believe it before we even receive it in Jesus' name. Matthew 5, 44. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Lord, I pray, help us, God, to love our enemies. God, we pray right now. I just pray for every person that has persecuted me, God. Every person that has come against me, that has made videos about me, that has talked bad about me, that has called me this or called me that or whatever, I pray, Lord, that you would just bless them. I pray that you would honor them. I pray that you would anoint them, God. I pray that you would use them in Jesus' name. You know, there was a guy that's made continual videos about me, made continual videos lying about me, and the Lord told me to bless his ministry financially. So I sent him a good, a good financial blessing because the Lord told me to, and then he posted it on his page saying, I can't believe how deceptive Isaiah is. Why would he send me money? Remember, I'm like, I'm just blessing. I'm just blessing those that persecute me. You're lying about me. You're making videos about me. And so I want to bless you. Yet he turned it into, I don't know, maybe he thought it was like hush money or something. But God says, bless those that persecute you. Pray for those that persecute you. Love your enemies. Love those people that are against you. Like this is what God's calling us to do. Blessing the people that are against us. Blessing the people that are enemies. God wants you to love them and pray for them and bless them. James chapter 4 verse 3. You ask and you don't receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. He says you ask and you don't receive because you ask wrong. We're asking for things to spend on our own passions. But God right now, he just wants to give you prayer or have you pray prayers that are not about you spending it on your passion, but pray prayers that will be all about the will of God. James 4, 3. So Lord, I pray that we would ask rightly. Because the verse says we ask wrong. So let's pray that we would ask right. God, I pray we would ask rightly. And we would not ask prayers for us to spend the prayer on our passion. We're not going like, Lord, give me this money so I can spend it on something I'm passionate about. But God, it's all about your will. We want to ask and receive all about your will. Your will, God. This is all about you. We honor you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. And we pray that, let us pray right prayers. Let us pray right prayers. God, give us the insight to pray right prayers. 1 Peter 3, 12. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are open to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So God's ear is open to our prayers, but God's face is against those that do evil. Lord, I thank you that you are have open ears to our prayers. Some of you tonight don't think God's hearing your prayers like his ears are closed. God's not deaf. God is hearing your prayer tonight. What are you praying for tonight? God says, I'm hearing that prayer. Why? Because my eyes are on the righteous. God's eyes are on the righteous. Jesus, thank you for having your eyes on us, God. Help us to walk in righteousness. Help us to realize, God, your ears are open to us. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. If you're doing evil, then God's face is against you. Face of the Lord is against you. You got to walk righteous. You got to walk holy. First Chronicles 16, 11. Seek the Lord. Look at what it says here. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Wow. So we don't just seek the Lord. We seek the Lord and his strength and his presence continually. Those are three things the Bible says to seek. Lord, I pray that I would seek you and your strength and your presence continually. God, let me not just seek you once a week. Let me not just seek you on Sunday morning for an hour and a half. Let me not just seek you once in a while. But God, I pray that I would seek you continually. I pray that I would walk with you continually. I pray that I would seek your strength, God. And I would just walk in your holiness, Lord. I just pray, Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. I want to walk continually in your presence. I want to walk continually in your power. That's a verse right there, guys. Seek his presence continually. He wants to be seeked. Luke 6, chapter 6, verse 12. In these days, he went out to the mountain to pray. All night, he continued in prayer to God. So Jesus went to the mountain to pray and all night long prayed to God. God is wanting us to 
get away from the busyness of the, of the culture, the busyness of our job, and get away. Find a mountain to pray. And I don't, I don't mean a physical mountain. Some of you might need to find an actual mountain. That's cool. That's fine. But find somewhere secluded, away from everyone else, to pray. And all night, Jesus prayed to God. If Jesus prayed all night, well, we're going to have an all-night prayer stream one of these days. We're going to have an all-night prayer stream one of these days. All night long, we're going to pray. All night long, we're going to have a prayer meeting. Because Jesus did it. Jesus did this. He This night, he wasn't sleeping. He was praying. So I pray, God, that we would find mountains to pray at. I pray, Lord, that this year we would find an area to get away and get alone with you and pray and seek your face and encounter your spirit and your presence. Lord, help us to have all-night prayer meetings. Give us a desire for all-night prayer meetings, Lord. All-night prayer meetings where we worship you, we seek you, we go after you in prayer and the word. In Jesus' name, God, do what only you can do. Pray all night. Pray all night. Ephesians. Okay, guys, we got 10 more here. We got 10 more. I, I put the last 10. These are warfare verses. These are breakthrough verses to get equipped for spiritual warfare. We've already done 50. Here we go. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes or the devil's plans. Be strong and put on the armor of God. Lord, I pray that we would be strong this year. We would fight against the plans of the enemy, Lord. Let us be strong and put on the full armor of God. Let us stand against the plans of the devil. Let us stand against the plans of the enemy. Satan, you have no power. We cancel every strategy and every plan of the enemy. And we put on the full armor of God right now. Every day we put on the full armor of God and we walk according to your purposes. We break the plans of the enemy. We stand against. The Bible says, take your stand against the devil's plans. Take your stand against the devil's schemes. We stand against you, Satan. You have no power over us. We stand strong against you in Jesus' name. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. God wants to protect you from the devil's plans and the evil one. God, we thank you that you are faithful. We thank you, Lord, that you are standing against the plans of the enemy. We thank you, God, that you are strengthening, strengthening us. We thank you, Lord, that you're protecting us from the evil one. Lord, that we are walking in holiness. We are walking in righteousness. And we just pray, God, that your power would be released over us in Jesus' name. God, your power would be released over us in Jesus' name. Strengthen us, Lord. Protect us from the evil one. Protect us from the evil one, Lord. Thank you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you for your divine protection. What better person to have in your corner than, than the Lord protecting you? He's faithful. 2 Corinthians 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish every argument and every pretension that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive. And we read this one earlier. I'm just realizing I put this verse twice. Maybe we needed it twice. I think I added uh, the end of the verse, but this is now 2 Corinthians 10.4. Earlier it was 10.5. Maybe we, God says, you, gotta, you need to hear this one twice. But I just pray, God, that we would take spiritual weapons up. Divine weapons that demolish strongholds. Take up your divine weapon. Take up your divine weapon right now. Thank you, Lord, for these spiritual weapons. Yeah, I read uh, verse 5 earlier, and now I'm reading verse 4. But we take up our divine weapons. Show us, God, what weapons you want us to use to overcome the plans and strategies of the enemy. Thank you, Jesus. All right, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Okay, so we have to submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will free, flee from you. Let's just pray right now that we, God would help us to submit ourselves to him. You're tired of the devil messing with you, eating your lunch, bullying you around. You need to submit yourself to God. That's the first thing you need to do, James 4, 7. Help us, Lord, to submit to you. God, when we're bucking against you, when we're fighting you, and we don't want to submit, when we're arguing with you, Lord, help us to submit to you. Help us also to resist the devil. The devil's constantly enticing us. He's, he's offering us things. Have some of this. Have some of this forbidden fruit. Have some of this lust. Have some of this whatever it is. Anger, bitterness. The devil brings things and offers them to us. And God says, resist it. No, I don't want that. Nope, I don't want that. 
Why? Because I'm already submitted to God. I'm already submitted to God. I'm, re I'm resisting you. I don't want it. Nope. Not taking the bait. Not taking what the devil's offering me. Well, it looks good. Not taking it. If the devil keeps coming to you over and over, offering you things, and you never take what he offers, he's just going to get bored with you. Like, that guy's boring. He never takes anything I offer, and then he just flees. He flees. You got to get to a place where the devil's not even messing with you there. He's just fleeing because he knows, man, every time I try to go after this guy, he just, he's a waste of my time. He, he, keeps, he keeps resisting me. Father, help us to resist the devil. Help us to resist the devil and submit our... our Help us to resist the devil and submit ourselves to you. God, we want to be submitted to you. Romans 8, 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors in him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor present, nor future, nor powers, nor depth, or anything in creation will separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you that we are more than conquerors in you. We thank you, God, that nothing, nothing, can separate us from your love. Nothing can separate us from the calling that you have on our life. Father, thank you that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Wash us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. And protect us in your name. Colossians 1.13 For he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves in whom we have redemption and forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. Just stop right now and thank the Lord for bringing you out of the kingdom of darkness. Remind yourself of where you were when you were in darkness. God brought you out. How, how grateful should we be that God brought us out? How grateful should we be that we're no longer of all the people that are still in darkness? Think about it. Billions still in darkness. And how special are you that God brought you out of darkness? That before you loved him, he first loved you. Before you chose him, he chose you. He predestined you. He pre-knew you and brought you out. That is a very special thing. Have you even ever thought about that? That all these other people are blind and dead and lost and you're not? That God found something in you that said, I'm going to bring that person out of darkness? Man, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that when I didn't believe in God, God believed in me. I'm so grateful that God just washed me and cleansed me and brought me out of darkness. John 16, 33. Jesus I, Jesus, have told you these things so that you might have peace. In this world, you have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. I think I wrote that one a second time too. That's good. God's given us peace. He's overcome the world. We might have trouble this year, but remind yourself, whatever I'm going through, Christ has already overcame it. He's already overcome the world. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Some of you are like, why did you put this verse in this list of verses you put? Because I want God to, to show us where Satan has disguised himself so we stop falling for his slide tricks. God, help us to recognize Satan's strategies and see him even when he's in disguise as an angel of light. Satan disguises himself, but God can help us see past the disguise. So I just pray, Lord, that you'd give us eyes to see past Satan's sly strategies and disguise. Help us, Lord, to see past this angel of light, or, or not an angel of light, the one that disguises himself as an angel of light. Give us discernment, Lord. Psalms 84, 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold for those who walk uprightly. Let me say that again. No good thing does he withhold from those that walk uprightly. Everything that is good that God has for you, he will give you if you walk uprightly. So I just pray, Lord, that you'd be our sun and shield. I pray that you'd bring favor and bestow it and honor on us, like you said in Psalms 84, 84, 11. And I pray, God, you would not withhold. God, that you would not withhold, according to your word, those that walk uprightly. Lord, if there is anything that you have for us that is right, that is what you want, I pray you'd release it tonight in Jesus' name. God, release everything that you have for us in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 37. This is amazing, guys, because we're on verse 60 and we're 59 minutes in. So we're perfectly on time. This is a miracle. Hey, God is doing miracles. Isaiah Saldivar got through his whole thing in one hour, like, like planned. Isaiah Saldivar didn't go 10 minutes every single verse like I usually do. Romans 8, 37. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors in him who loved us. Thank you, Lord, that we are conquerors. Father, I pray right now, 
over every single person in this chat. Those that stayed for the seven days, those that just jumped in, those that are uh, here for a few minutes, I pray God that there would be a prayer revival in our life. I feel that right there in the Holy Spirit. There would be a prayer revival in our life, God, that we would just have a hunger and an appetite for prayer. For me, I'm not saying it's a prophetic word for the year, but for me, God has clearly spoke to me that 2024 for me is a prayer revival. I used to pray eight to 12 hours a day. We used to have 24 seven prayer meetings that never ended in my early days. We just prayed hours and hours. I was literally praying eight to 12 hours every single day in my early days of salvation. I need a prayer revival. God wants to bring a prayer revival to us. So I just pray, Lord, a prayer revival in my house, in my family. Just bring a prayer revival, God, over your people. We want, we want a relationship with you. We want to know you. We know, God, that prayer is, uh, for a lot of people, not fun, not uh, exciting, doesn't get views, doesn't get clicks. We don't care. We don't care, God. We want you. We want to have a relationship with you. Not, nothing's going to matter. Nothing else matters in the world. When you stand before God, you think all these clicks and views and all is going to matter? It doesn't matter. What matters is my relationship with God. And I develop in the place of prayer. That's where I develop my prayer life. So I, I want to be people that pray. I want to be a ministry that prays. I don't, I don't care about other stuff, whatever. Lord, let us have a prayer revival. Get around people that pray. I really feel like the Lord is saying that tonight. Get around people that pray. Get around people that shine with the glory of God, that you know they've been with Jesus. When you come out of prayer, I'm telling you, start develop, developing a prayer life, people are going to say there's something different about you. Unbelievers are going to say, man, you're different. Why? Because I've developed a prayer life. God's presence is on me. God's light shines out of me. Come on, break out of the boringness of prayer. Some of you, you don't even know what true pleasure is. You're so online all the time on Instagram and TikTok and you just let your brain turn into spaghetti from so much TikTok and short videos that you don't, prayer is boring to you. It's not prayer that's boring. You're boring. You are the boring one. God is not boring. You are. You are. We don't even know what true excitement is anymore. You want to talk about fun? Getting in God's presence and encountering him. Opening up the word of God and the eternal God speaks to you. It's way funner than watching some prank video, some person dancing in a bikini on TikTok. Come on. We need to pray more in 2024. Someone, someone just typed that in the chat. I just read it. I wasn't original, by the way. I read that in the chat from someone. Pray more in 2024. I like that. I'm not going to, you know, make it a slogan or anything. Pray more in 2024. We need a prayer revival. We need a prayer revival. Let us be people that pray. Haters can hate. People can say, they can say whatever they want. We're going to have a prayer revival. We're going to get full of the Holy Ghost and power. We're going to walk in the Spirit. Most people don't pray because you gain nothing with man when you pray. If you grow a big following, people, oh, he's so cool. Look, he has a big following. So you spend time growing your following. When you pray, you gain nothing with man. Nobody acknowledges you when you pray. Nobody pats you on the back when you pray, but you're developing a relationship with the most important person in history. That's God, by the way. Who's that person? God. So we need to develop that. Develop that prayer life. I hope you guys are enjoying, I'm going to stay on for a little while longer, these seven days of prayer. Please let me know if you've enjoyed this. It has definitely been an, a big undertaking to go live for seven days. I, I mean, this whole week I've just been focused on these live streams and I don't know if I'll be live tomorrow with a teaching or not. We've done eight streams in seven days. Go watch them on the live tab. Pray about partnering with us. All of this is supported by you guys. Okay. We don't have, this is our main source of income. So I think like less than 1% of our live audience partners with us, which is totally fine, but it's not like thousands of people that watch are partnering with the stream. There's a small percent that carry the stream. So thank you guys. And next year, oh, I keep saying next year. This year, we are going to be praying every single week. We're not doing once a month partner calls this year. We're doing weekly partner prayer meetings. So if you are a monthly partner on my website, which is right here, isaiahsullivan.com slash partner or link in the, in the comments or description, or you are a monthly partner on YouTube members, 
you're going to get a code. It's going to be a Zoom link. Save that Zoom link because that will be the same link all year Thursday at, let's say, 1.30 Pacific time. You're going to jump on that Zoom link. Yeah, 1.30 Pacific time right here. We just said it. 1.30 Pacific time, we are going to pray together just like this every single week, Thursday. 1.30, we're going to pray together. We're going to pray for each other. We're going to answer questions. We're going to talk. And then when I leave the prayer meeting, I'll pass it to someone else and you guys can keep it going. But we're going to pray. If you don't know how to pray, you're going to learn to pray. You're going to love to pray. If you don't like prayer, you will like prayer if you come to these prayer meetings and stay. You'll start learning to pray. It's going to be an amazing time. Amazing times. 5.30 in the morning for in Singapore. Oh, sorry, that's early. You might have to get up early, get some coffee and join us, Trinity. It's going to be amazing. All seven of these prayer streams will be on the YouTube channel in the live tab. I'm going to be working on videos this week. If I'm not live tomorrow night, I might be. But if I'm not, come check on the channel at 6. If I'm not live tomorrow night, because I'm recording videos to put out this week. I want to also, well, I won't even talk about that. You'll, just be ready for some new videos this week. I have an exciting idea that I want to post. And you'll see, I'm going to be doing more content like uh it's called irl like in real life content and vlog style content this year and we've already started to do that because we did worship night on saturday we set up a whole stream set up in my living room and had candace doing worship which was amazing we're going to do that more often and we also did prayer in my living room on monday and i also filmed a 24-hour docu-series documentary style video with paul and morgan that will be coming out on their channel soon um they filmed me for 24 hours what does a day in my life look like so you can see that it's going to be interesting. We're going to be doing more of that. So thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for monthly partnering. Thank you for giving one-time donations to these streams. Again, we couldn't do it without you guys supporting us. These are not, these prayer streams are not monetized. So we're not making money on these. And if you didn't know, we're demonetized on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. I don't know why. I don't know why they keep taking all of our monetization away. Maybe because we keep talking about the alphabet community. Maybe because we keep telling people to repent. Maybe because we keep telling people they're going to go to hell if they don't repent. Maybe because we're exposing the new age movement. Maybe because we're exposing yoga and tarot cards and all these big companies. And uh, that might be why. I'm not sure. Does, does any of you know why we're not monetized anywhere? I don't know. But we keep losing all our monetization. Thankfully, we're still monetized on YouTube. Otherwise, we'd be really struggling out here. But... You could still partner with us and help us. We have an emergency email list in case we get banned, God forbid. And I want to just give you stats for last year. For those of you that did partner with us last year, we reached, well, we hit 202 million views. Think about how crazy that is. Last year, 202 million views. We streamed for 262 hours. We gained 391,000 new followers. We had on YouTube alone... 10.1 million hours watched. That's a lot of hours. 10 million hours. I don't even know how many years that is. It's a long time. We posted 700. Last year, we posted 718 videos and we had 2.4 million live comments. Wow. What a year it's been. I also want to say, I see my sister in the chat. Cherish, please post your link. I want all of you to go subscribe to my sister. I just shared her video on my community tab today. Um, her, my mom and grandma shared an amazing message at her church. But please, Cherish Downey is my little sister. Please go subscribe to her channel. She has awesome content. She's growing. God is moving through her ministry. And I'm so proud of her. Go check her out. Uh, if you guys mods don't mind putting Cherish's link in the comments. And uh, Cherish, you can also put your link in the comments. Anytime you're in here, Cherish, you can spam your link. There's no shame here. Shamelessly plug your, your channel. And listen, look at my mods. Emily, right when I asked, five seconds later, Emily has Cherish Downey's channel on the link. I don't even know how my mods do this. Where do these mods, how are these mods so good? I don't even understand. How are you guys so good at linking stuff and finding stuff? It's amazing. We have the best mods on YouTube. It's because, hey, I'll tell you why, they're spirit-filled, all right? You got a lot of other channels where they're not spirit-filled, but when you got the Holy Ghost, you just do things better. So we got those spirit-filled mods up in the chat. It's good to have the Holy Ghost. It's good to have the Holy Ghost. You don't want to be one of those dry, crusty, spiritless Christians. Anonymous said, thank you for all seven days. Truly a blessing. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, guys. Also, you can give on Venmo. I, I will be reading donations in the future streams. I just, for the prayer streams, I'm not reading through donations just for these prayer streams. And we're not monetizing the prayer streams as well. Some of you say, no, Isaiah, I did see ads on one of your prayer streams. I'm going to explain to you why. We used 
copyright music, worship music, and we got literally five different companies put copyright strikes on our videos. And then all five companies that wrote Christian songs, I know it's weird, they all put ads on our videos. So if you go to my prayer streams or the worship stream or the family prayer stream, and you're like, why is there ads every few minutes? You can thank all of the beautiful Christian labels that are so godly that uh, want all the ad revenue from all of our videos. So you can thank them. We literally sang a song. We sang a song, like a minute of it. And then the company that wrote the song hit us with a copyright strike. It's like so, it will strike on the video, not on my channel, but on the video. So cringe. Sometimes, honestly, the Christian world is just, let me say it this way. All the big Christian, most the big Christian labels, Christian publishing companies, Christian movie companies, the head people are a bunch of businessmen. They're not on fire for God. They don't cast out demons. They don't heal the sick. They don't pray in the spirit. They're not full of the Holy Ghost. They are businessmen that are taking advantage of the church and milking the church. Um, these people are not spiritual, most of them. A lot of the big name worship artists are not spiritual. I mean, you can just go on their Instagram, see them drinking and partying. You'll know they're not spiritual, but they're very worldly. I would say a lot of them are just as worldly as secular labels. Just, it's so cringe to me. Like, I can't sing a worship song without you hitting me with a copyright strike. What world do we live in? So bizarre. That's my little rant though. But seriously, it's like the mainstream Christian world in America is, is so far from uh, the Bible. Let's just say, I'm trying to find nice words to say, but I'm just telling you right now, uh, I know, you know, I've brushed shoulders with some of the higher ups and, and uh, they're carnal as can be. Let's just say that. They're carnal as can be. And I'm talking about the big Christian television shows, you know, the hosts dropping F-bombs in the green room, literally saying the F-word in the green room and then getting out and being like, welcome to our show, God is good. Like, it's faker than you can imagine. So definitely exposure's coming. Everyone's freaking out about all these ministers getting exposed. Praise God. I'm here for it. They need to get exposed. These ministers that are abusing people and sexual scandals, uh, Lord, expose all of them. Lord, expose all of them. The Bible says, oh man, we still have the worship music on. I forgot to turn that off. You guys have been hearing little keys the whole time I've been ranting. The Bible says what's done in the dark will be brought to the light. If you're a minister doing crazy stuff, abusing people, sexual scandals, uh, sorry to tell you, but you should know it's only a matter of time before you get exposed. Why? Because the Bible says whatever you do in darkness, God is going to bring to the light. So I'm here for it. God's shaking up his church. Judgment starts in the house of God, and we need to get a bunch of these lukewarm, compromised pastors out of here anyway. Seriously, though. Seriously, seriously. Trinity said, Carl, my handsome boy. I think you guys have missed Carl, haven't you? If you're new here, you know, that's our pet bird. No big deal. The people love him. He's, he's the people's champion. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. We miss you, Carl. What's the pigeon doing on stream? I don't even know. We're not sure. He just showed up one day. Feels good though, guys. Man, feels good to do seven days of streaming. I didn't know if I could even do that. I'm like, can I stream every day for seven days? But yeah, we did it. It's been amazing. It's been all about God. We've been lifting him up in prayer. And I might be live tomorrow. I might not be. We'll have no podcast Tuesday because we had a podcast on Friday night. We did, excuse me. We did two streams on Friday. Wow, it's been a busy week. But we will be back live 100% chance next Monday. We might even jump with a surprise live this week sometime. I might go live and uh, do something fun. We'll see. But we will have video uploads. So please watch the videos and all of that. <sighs> we're, we're grinding, y'all. We're working. We're doing what God's called us to do. And, and to, uh, until he's, how do I say this? Until the Lord changes my assignment, we'll keep doing that. We'll keep doing what he's called us to do. Where's the background piano music called? I, I, it's called, uh, I'll tell you right now. I think I know what it's called. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I think it's just Christian copyright free prayer song. Let me see. Actually, you know what? I think I can click it and see. Hold on. Hold on. I think I can find it. Uh, Where is it at? There it is. Let's double click it. Prayer. Prayer. Worship instrumental for prayer. No copyright. Let me find it. Worship instrumental for prayer i got it off of youtube it's called worship instrumental for prayer no copyright <laughs> that's 
That's literally what it's called. It's on YouTube. Worship instrumental for prayer. No copyright. It has mountains on the thumbnail. You'll find it if you search that. Get a new animal, Isaiah. Carl is retired. I would, but everyone would go crazy. Unfortunately, people like him too much. But yeah. He hasn't made an appearance in about a week, so you know. Diane said, if anyone wants to join for another 90-day Bible reading plan, we're starting tonight. Join on Discord. Yeah, join the Discord, guys. They're starting the 90-day Bible again starting today on the Discord. So if you want to read the Bible in 90 days, we just finished that uh, about a month ago, and you can go do that. Did we retire the bobblehead? No, the bobblehead's right here. He's just dusty. Maybe I should just put a video of the bobblehead, like, green screened, and then I could just put him on screen. You want me to? Oh, I could do that. That'd be cool. And he could just be right there in front, but he wouldn't be, um, I wouldn't have to hold it up. But he's sitting there still. His head's a little to the side. He needs to get an adjustment. He needs to go to the chiropractor. Uh, that piano song doesn't have lyrics. Can you use soft lighting? Can you use soft lights in your studio? I'm using soft lights. What do you mean? I have a huge soft box right in front of me. What do you mean, can I use soft lights? What do you mean? All right, I'm going to talk to the chat for a bit because I haven't in a week. I've been doing the prayer streams and getting off. Cooking stream soon? Yes, we'll do another one. Meow at the end, someone said. Cover my ears. What do you guys talk about a meow at the end? I don't understand. You guys always say a meow at the end. I still can't figure out what you mean. This is an interesting flavor. By the way, Hint Water, you still owe me a sponsorship. Lemon and blueberry. And it actually tastes just like lemon and blueberry. Would you Would you think that? What a surprise. How's your back holding up? Um, it's still in pain, but it's much better. It was really bad. I couldn't even walk, put it that way. Yes, if you want to adjust your partner plan and edit it, I'm going to post the link to edit it right now. Are you ready? I'm going to do it right here. Edit partner plan. You get this e link with your email, but people miss it. So there you go. There's the link to edit your partner plan on my website. You can edit it or cancel it anytime. I loved watching your cooking videos. Boy, you better me out. What? I'm, I'm so confused. Yes, I've tried blackberry hand. I drank some today. Pray more in 2024. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to partner, but it doesn't give me an option to enter my debit card info. Uh, What do you mean? On my website? On, on the website, it definitely has an option. Let me go check. Um, partner monthly. Yeah, if you hit next. So you do recurring amount. You can type in a custom amount. Let's do a dollar here. I'm just going to make sure this works. Recurring monthly. Start now. Uh, next. Yeah, if you press next. So you fill out the info, hit next. Then it has your card info. You can use Google Pay card, link it to your bank account, and do all that. Super easy on the website to do. But yeah, it definitely works. Hint Water better start sponsoring you. Exactly, mom. That's what I'm saying. My mom agrees. What did you do for your back to get help? Um, I have a chiropractor that I go to that's helped my neck tremendously. Which actually, they took a video of me at the chiropractor for the 24 hours. And I went to a chiropractor, got adjusted, felt way better, and then got adjusted again. And just slowly, I'm getting better. I just pinched a nerve in my lower back, which I've never done before. And it was, if you've pinched a nerve in your lower back, you know it was extremely painful. And I couldn't move, and the timing was terrible. So thank you for TJ for covering me on my, on my stream and all that. I don't know if you guys know this, but I had chronic neck pain for almost three years. Stiff neck where I could barely move my neck where I'd pinch nerves and all of that in my neck. And I started seeing a chiropractor like six months ago, five months ago, four months ago. I don't know, months, few months ago and haven't had any neck issues since. I've had no pain in my neck, no stiff neck, no restless leg syndrome. All the symptoms have gone and it's been super life-changing for me. So I personally used to think chiropractors were a joke. I'm like, they just move things around and pop things and what? I thought it was a joke. I, I didn't, I was like, no, I'm not going to chiropractor. And I finally went... And yeah, it's been life-changing. 
really helped a lot. And uh, yeah, I can't say enough how much it's changed my life. And you'll see my chiropractor in the video on Paul and Morgan's channel because they go in with me when I go and they crack my back and crack my neck and all of that. The only hint water I don't like is lemon. There's a few flavors. I don't like cherry. Oh, there's a bunch of flavors I don't like, but there's a lot I do like. You pinched a nerve from sneezing. I mean, I wish I was doing something cool. I was literally leaning down, grabbing a bag of garbage to throw it in a garbage thing, and uh, it just popped. How do you know what to upload? Well, I mean, I pray about what I do, you know, so I don't know, whatever I'm interested in, whatever God, God gives me a word for something. But I did feel like God said for the first seven days of the year, dedicate it to prayer. The next call-in show will probably be next week. The video is not, I don't know when the 24 hours video is out yet, but it'll be on Paul and Morgan's channel. And I'll, I'll post about it and let you guys know. Try physical therapy for your back. It helped tremendously. Yeah, the doctor told me to go to a physical therapist and then I ended up going to a, chiro a family chiropractor. And uh, yeah, I've had no pain in my neck since, which has been life-changing. Thank you, Johnny, so much. Um, any news on when you're going to release the book? Books take about a year, so it'll be towards the end of the year. To get them into all the uh, publishing and distribution and Amazon, all of that, it takes about a year. So I'm going to be working on it soon. Yeah, it'll be out this year. Make sure you guys go watch the podcast I did with Paul and Morgan Friday night. It's on my live tab on YouTube. Go watch it. Okay, tutorial for pickleball. I love pickleball. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's my only hobby right now, but I love it. I love it. Keep, we'll keep the healing stick. Someone said, Alyssa, when are you coming back for some fun? She'll be on soon. All right. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for giving. If you haven't gave and you can afford to, please do. If you can't afford it, don't apologize. Don't feel bad. Again, next week, we will start the monthly uh, with the weekly prayer meetings with the partner. So you'll be getting a email early next week sometime with the link there. And then we will be also streaming Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and then Thursday prayer meeting, and then uploading videos and doing all the good stuff. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I will see you maybe tomorrow night. What an amazing time it's been. Seven days of prayer. This is the last stream of the prayer. And uh, it's been amazing. So we will see you guys maybe tomorrow night, most likely next week, or maybe randomly live. Who knows? I might jump on live this week. But we'll have videos uploaded this week for sure. So look forward to those. Love you guys and appreciate you guys. And we'll see you later. Bye. Love you guys. Have a good night. Yeah, this song is just head bobbing, head bobbing. Love you guys. Have a good night. See you guys soon. Seven days. I'm going to miss you guys. Seven days straight. Wow. been good guys i hope you got closer to god and i hope it, you enjoyed it love you all have a good night
All right, guys. Have a good night. Love you guys. Have a good night, guys.